scriptures. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Philippians 4, beginning with the sixth verse, one of my very favorites. Listen for God's word. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, open our hearts and minds this day so that what we hear is your word and what we do is put your word into practice now and always. Amen. We are entering into one of those seasons in the church. It's not Thanksgiving, it's not Advent, it's not even Halloween. Although some think that this season is scarier and it's more uncomfortable than Halloween. We are at that time in the church's calendar when we talk about stewardship. Stewardship is one of those definitions that kind of loses something in the translation. Everything in this world belongs to God. There is nothing that God did not create in some way. And our loving God puts everything on this wonderful planet at our disposal. So we are stewards or we are caretakers of everything that is God's and of what God gives to us. And we live as good stewards when we appreciate all that God has given and when we take care of God's creation. Now, is that what we think of when we hear the word stewardship? And it's not. When we hear the word stewardship, we think of giving our time and talents to the church. We think of giving our money to the church. Or more accurately, we think of that yearly campaign in which the church determines how much income it will have in the coming year and how we as members can support the church financially in our giving. We think of letters and pledge cards that come in asking for support. We think about how awkward it can be when it comes to supporting our church because it raises questions. Should I be giving? Am I giving enough? Is my giving helping to do God's work? Because of all of these reasons, stewardship and listening to a sermon on stewardship can make people feel ill at ease. I do not wish to make anyone uncomfortable when it comes to our response as Christians to our giving to God. So I am here to assure you that I will not be giving a stewardship sermon this year. Actually, I'll, I'll be giving three of them. <laughs> stewardship should never be about how much you are going to pledge to God for the coming year. Stewardship should always be about how does the way I live my life and serve my church, how is that a praiseful and thankful response to all that God has given to me? Our stewardship theme for this year is gifts in action. And for my three sermons on stewardship, I want us to look at the following quote from Leo Buscaglia. He says, your talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. So how do we use our talent? How do we use that gift from God? How do we put it into action as we serve God in the world? Now, over the next few weeks, we are going to look at three ways in which we can put our gifts in action by loving God and serving Christ in this church. Today's sermon focuses on how we use our gifts that God has given to be the very best people for God that we can be. Paul talks about this in today's scripture. For us to be in tune with God, he says we need prayer, that we need to think on positive and lovely attributes. First, he instructs us that we are not to worry and that we are to take everything to God in prayer. That sounds simple enough. How do we do our best for God in this world? We let God do the worrying and we pray to God for anything 
and everything. I, I think it's a most beautiful thing that we have a God that so loves us that we can take, we're not just take, we are invited to take everything to God in prayer. In prayer we take our worries and fears, we take our requests, we take our thanks. In prayer we take ourselves, we pray for ourselves, we pray for others, we pray for our loved ones and strangers, we even pray for our enemies. We can pray when we're angry, we can pray when we have doubts, we can pray when we are in need of forgiveness. Our prayers can be a source of strength, a source of resolve. Our prayers can be used to gain understanding. Our prayers can be a time of praise, a time of thanksgiving, and a time of silence. William Barclay says that when we pray, we must remember three things. We must remember the love of God, which only wants the best for us. We must remember the wisdom of God, which always knows what is best for us. And we must remember the power of God, which will bring to pass what is best for us. Believing that in prayer and giving all to God will empower us to do our best for our Lord every day. The second thing Paul mentions is he, he tells us to think on these things. And in case there's any doubt what these things are, Paul leaves nothing to chance. He lists the things that we should be thinking about, those things that should be on the forefront of our daily thoughts. Now let's, we'll do this quickly, but let's take them and let's look at them all one at a time. First he says, whatever is true. The truth is that it's an intricate concept. It seems to have form and substance. It guides the way we live. Sometimes the truth can get in the way and further complicate our lives. And at the same time, the truth will never let us down. It cannot be hidden, it cannot be changed, it cannot be avoided, and it has this talent for always being revealed. The person who lives by the truth does things that are right, gains people's respect, lives a life based on trust, and never lets you down. Paul says whatever is honorable. There are things and there are people in this world that are flippant, that uh, provide a cheap fix, that have no substance, that are shallow. And then there is the person who lives with honor, an individual whose word is their bond, a person that means what they say, a person who lives by their own example. Now, of these two lists, which one do you want to follow? Our values and the things in life, our values are those things in life that we can truly call our own. And when we change them or when we sell them out, we have nothing left. Paul says whatever is just. Some want a life that is full of pleasure and comfort and ease. A just person is one who wants a life of duty and responsibility and a sense of fairness. Whatever is pure, something that is pure, it's untainted, it's unpolluted, it's unblemished. When we live a pure life, it means that we are not afraid to show God who we are and we are not afraid to let that person rule in our heart. Whatever is pleasing, if our minds are set on vengeance, we will be prone to hate. If our minds are judgmental, we will be prone to resentment. If our minds are selfish, we will be prone to bitterness. But if our minds gravitate to that which is pleasing, we will be prone to love. Whatever is commandable. Our words, our thoughts, our actions should be focused on goodness. When we are commendable, it is God saying, this is my child in whom I am well pleased. Now why would Paul list these wonderful qualities and tell us that it's important to think on these things? Why not just list them? Why add the part that says you must think about these things? The simple answer is that the more we think about something, the more time and attention we give to it. 
If we are constantly thinking about the right things, the right behavior, the right attitude, sooner or later it will be ingrained in us and we will do what is right before God. And when we do what is right before God, we are giving God our very best every day and that is good stewardship. There once was a, a man who grew up in the, you can pick the place, the, the, the poor hills of Kentucky, how is that? And he had a disadvantage in this world. He wasn't born into or with much. His, his mother left, there was no father. This, this young man was born into a world in which it was him and his grandmother. Grandmother was a good person. She provided a roof over his head. She had put clothes on his back, made sure there was food in his stomach, made sure that he always went to church. But apart from that, that's about all they had. And going to church and growing up, this young man was determined because he didn't have much. If he could find one thing in his life that he could be the best at, then he would live his life in a way with that one thing that would honor God. And this was no easy task because apart from the things I mentioned, there wasn't anything else in this family. There was no opportunity for education. There was no resources they could rely on. There was no people in the know out there that could help him in the world. And as he's thinking about how he's going to do this, he goes to town one day and he sees a man that's selling Bibles. And he thought, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the one thing I could do. Maybe I could sell Bibles and that would bring people closer to God. So he goes up to the man and he says, sir, can, I'd like to sell Bibles too. Do you think your company would let me sell Bibles? And the man said, well, you know, a Bible is a very special thing to people and it's very important to them and it has, it has a personal connection to them. And he says, and I just don't think that people, you, you, you need a certain look, you need a certain education. I just don't think people would buy a Bible from you. And so the man went on his way and the, the, the young hero of our story would not be was undaunted by that request. So he found out where the Bible company was and he writes them a letter and he says, I would really like to sell Bibles for your company. Will you teach me how to do that? And a couple weeks later, he gets a package in the mail and the letter says yes. And it's a whole training kit and it says study and learn all about our product and what we do. And, and then we'll, we'll let you know. So he studies and he gets ready and he learns the proper techniques on how to be a salesman and they say go in this area of your town and start selling Bibles and so he does and he goes up to people and he tries to sell a Bible and after the first day he sells five Bibles in the first day pretty good after the, the second day he does a little bit more the third day he starts to find his rhythm by the end of the month he's out selling everybody in the company one month into the job and after three months, he's setting all the records, whatever the records are in the Bible selling world, he's breaking them all. And so the owner of the company decides that he needs to get this new employee with his best salesman, because if his best salesman can sell, and this guy can sell, putting the two techniques and the two people together could really take this company into the future. So he brings them both together, and wouldn't you know it, just as it happens in these stories, that the, the number one salesman for the company just happens to be the man that told them that he wasn't cut out to sell anyone anything. And when the, the, the best salesman sees him, he, he doesn't want to talk to this person. He doesn't want to know his techniques. He, he's infuriated that this is the person who's out selling everyone in the company. And so he challenges him. He said, I'll listen to your techniques and you can teach me how to sell if and you can sell more Bibles than me in a week. So we'll go for one week. Whoever sells the most, if, if you sell them, I'll listen to how you do it. So they go out, they have the big contest, and they go and they, 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 they go for the whole week and they, they sell their Bibles. And the salesman of the company sells more Bibles in that one week than he has ever sell, sold in any other week in his life. And he walks into the, to the boardroom where they're comparing who won with that swagger and that confidence, only to find out 
that the, the rookie salesman beat him by seven Bibles. And so he concedes and he gives up and he says, okay, you can tell me the technique. How do you sell so many Bibles? What's your secret? And the young man says, I have no secret. I introduce myself to people. I tell them I'm selling Bibles. I ask them if I can read a story from the Bible. And then I talk to them. And when I'm done talking to them, they buy a Bible. And they, and, and they take a Bible from me. And the man says, that's it? That's all you do? He says, when I sell a Bible, I talk to them about the quality of the product they're getting. I talk to them about the high grain leather that we use on the books. I talk to them about how our red letter Bibles, where you get the words of Jesus, are very, very important. I talk to them about the study notes. I talk to them about the maps in the back. I talk to them about the history of why the Bible was written. And I give them everything they need to where they have to have a Bible, and all you do is read to them. He said, by all rights, I should be outselling you 10 to 1. And the young man looks at this great salesman and he says, you know everything there is to know about this book, but I love the author. And that's the difference. And that's what Jesus gives to us. We are just beginning to learn about stewardship. And today we want to know how we give our very best to God in this world. We do that by loving the author of the Bible. We do that by taking everything to God in prayer. We do that by getting our minds focused on that is what is true and honorable and pleasing. We focus on that and we make God the center of our lives and that's how we become good stewards. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to do what is right and true and honorable and pleasing. Help everything we do in this life be done to make you proud, now and always. Amen.